Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to our webinar on the new payments platform. I'm Jabanka Roberts and with me today I have our Cuskill payments expert Nathan Churchwood. So the purpose of today's webinar is to take you through one of the biggest initiatives in the Australian payments industry known as the new payments platform or the NPP. So what does this mean for you and your business? And what is Cuskill doing to help you prepare for this and make this a really smooth ride for you? So today Nathan's going to take you through an overview of the changes coming through and how we can help you and how you can be part of this exciting revolution. So uh, we will have uh, time for questions and answers at the end of this webinar. So I encourage you to send through your questions as you think of them and we'll attempt to address them at the end. All right, so let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Churchill. Good morning, everyone. So it's great to actually be the, running the first uh, webinar to talk to uh, a broad range of our clients about uh, the opportunities that are uh, we're seeing in the industry, how the industry is uh, addressing those, and the opportunities for you to be part of that. Uh, as Jamaica said, then we'll have some, some Q&A, and uh, I think, though, that you'll find this to be uh, interesting, and we've run it uh, with a couple of clients that have found it to be a little learning experience. Look, we'll start out thinking about some of the forces that are really impacting the uh, the payments industry and the uh, the services that uh, are important to your members as well as to, to the staff in your offices that support your members in their day-to-day -day transaction banking. And what we're seeing and where we see the opportunity is that digital transformation in banking, while may on the surface seem to be a threat because you think, well, perhaps that's the, uh, the domain of very uh, big banks with very big uh, investment budgets in IT. But across the board, McKinsey and company have done research to show that digital transformation in banking is an opportunity for all institutions. And the main opportunity is not in just the, the uh, delivery of front-end solutions. It's also in lowering the operational costs through automate, automation, creating digital experiences and moving transactions to uh, more digital channels. That's why we think that NPP is coming at the right time to help our clients to transform some of the transactional experiences that you currently do potentially through check, potentially through uh, manual processes, to the much greater level of automation that uh, NPP is targeting uh, across the industry. We're also seeing that across uh, the way that we're engaging with our clients. So many of you will have heard uh, Jabanka and other product managers at uh, Cuscal talk about the way that we're bringing mobile payments and mobile banking together into the one app. We think that at the moment the opportunity is definitely around cards but we'll also be working with you as our clients and uh, the, the channels and solutions that we roll out through both Cuscal and other uh, services to ensure that NPP is embedded into these channels as well. Partly it's this digitization of payments and digitization of banking, but also the rollout of uh, contactless cards that all of you have been part of over the last couple of years, we've seen a great substitution of cash transactions with card and digital transactions. Again, we see that NPP will be the next wave of this. But looking at the growth in debit cards, for example, a lot of that has come through contactless transactions. And what that tells us is that when a transaction account is really easy to use, and when the services that you can make available to, to your customers through digital channels and through non-cash channels, they will actually use their money to go through and go moving from cash to non-cash. The value of this to a financial institution, whether you be a credit union or even through to the, the larger banks, is that that drives a lot of engagement because the way that people use their money is a very personal experience. And a lot of the industry is seeing that that's becoming a lot more embedded into the way that customers use their money and use these digital experiences in their day-to-day -day transactions. 
So we've seen great take up of contactless cards and we've seen, for example, you might go into a cafe or into a bar and you'd uh, tap and pay and move out really quickly. But think about how many transactions now and, the, and all of those train tickets, whether it be in uh, Sydney, whether it be in Melbourne or Brisbane, train and bus tickets that many used to be purchased as a one-off experience but are now on uh, reloadable and uh, automatically topping up uh, transport cards. We're moving much more to invisible transactions that uh, then drive payments back into a transaction account. And the next wave of that's not just going to be in transport, it'll be in more of those everyday transactions, moving payments from where you might have tapped a card to now is embedded right into the purchase experience. Two of the applications that I love using on my phone are Clip, which uh, is a uh, e-bar tab. So instead of having to put my card behind the bar and then go back with a, with a, with a bar card and then at the end of the night go and uh, pay for that purchase, Clip gives me the ability to set up an e-tab and I just present my phone and the card is on file. I don't need to worry about uh, security of my card. I don't need to worry about whether I've uh, gone over the amount that I wanted to spend because I've set my limit up front. The other one I love is Uber. Rather than having to uh, hunt down a taxi or book a taxi, I go onto my Uber app and book the, the closest car. The driver comes, picks me up, takes me where I want to go, and I get out of the car. It's a really personal, really highly engaged experience, and I never feel like I have to pay. But the transaction comes out of the account um, at the end of the journey, and I feel like a, a real uh, person that's in, in control, and it means that uh, I've got a seamless experience. And that's where we see NPP will start to bring bank account transactions as well. Which brings on to the third trend that we actually think is really important for you as uh, credit unions who are looking to ensure that you could be the main banking relationship manager. And look at that uh, the top line. RFI Group have identified that the transaction account is one of the main drivers of main financial institution. So we think that the NPP has got a great alignment with this trend because if you've got more capability that's being driven into the transaction account through the ability to have payments between individuals, electronic payments to, uh, to businesses, non-card payments that actually mean your, your banking app is the source of that transaction, it aligns with that trend to say that the bank, the transaction account becomes a very powerful and very strong driver of engagement. The more engaged they are, the more likely you'll be to be the main financial institution. So I've talked a lot about uh, how I think the NPP lines up with some of the trends that we're seeing in customer engagement, in the drive toward being the main financial institution, and in uh, innovative services. Rather than me talk about this in a very uh, detailed fashion, what we've created is an animation that you can use within your organisation to explain to your teams and also potentially uh, put on your website to look at uh, what's coming up and the services that are available for your members. So we're going to go to that animation and then that'll paint the picture for what will then go into some of the services and how MPP is going to address the key trends in transaction banking coming up at the end of 2017. Imagine a world where your money moves just as fast as you do. Right now, money moves slowly. Australian banks only transfer money at certain times of the day and only during business hours. In 2017, the new payments platform will change all that. The NPP will automate payments, allowing them to move quickly, anytime, 24-7. Simple. No need for BSBs and account numbers. Simply use an email, mobile number or ABN. Easy. Send and receive payments in seconds, with a few clicks from your phone, tablet or computer. Meaningful. Add more transaction information than ever, from descriptions 18 characters long to hundreds. Safe. 
Confirm your payments have gone to the right place with instant notifications. Efficient. Financial institutions can reconcile payments and settlements at the time of processing, saving time and money. Right now, Cuskill is one of the lead participants alongside the RBA and major banks working to design and build Australia's NPP and position our clients at the forefront of banking innovation. Get in touch with Cuskill today and find out how the NPP can make doing business better. So hopefully that gives you a, a taste for what will be delivered to you and to your members by the end of 2017, really will help you be part of a very big drive to innovation within the financial services and the banking industry. In the past, perhaps we've seen that innovation has been happening out on the edge, but NPP will help to ensure that your account and the services that you provide to your members are going to be very much seen as innovative and make you seem to be part of a great shift in the industry toward providing a lot of transactional and day-to-day -day services through the accounts that you provide. So thinking back through that innovate in an animation, there are four key elements that you need to be aware of and to think about in terms of what makes the MPP so important to you and the way that you can provide solutions and services to your members. The simplest one to think about is the faster payments. So real time, close to immediate funds availability, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Very different to direct entry, completely a world apart from checks, where instead of being batch based and file based and deferred settlement, it is a very much a one-to-one, -one, every transaction settled in real time through exchange settlement accounts. And then Cusco will provide that transaction to you and integrate it with your core banking system so that you can provide that transaction straight through to your member for a real time availability. But that's actually not all we're doing. If we were looking at some of the uh, real-time solutions and faster payment solutions that have happened overseas, they've stopped there and then slowly driven out some more capability over the following years. What we're doing in Australia, though, is going straight for where we can really start to drive innovation and start to drive a lot more services and importance to uh, the way that people use their payments and use their transaction accounts. So if you think about direct entry, you have a very short uh, field for description of who the payment comes from. It's only 22 characters. And then you've got a, uh, a reference field. It's uh, 18 characters, whereas NPP increases those to 35 characters. So you've got twice as much ability to identify who the payment's from and what it's for, but then really ups the ante on that. So there's actually 280 characters of descriptive text that can carry with a message, which means you've actually got a service that's available to your members through your transaction account that becomes completely differentiated to anything they can do at the moment. Not only that, it addresses the challenge that people have with remembering their BSB and account number. So the addressing service that comes with the NPP means that whether it be a mobile phone number, an email address, or for business customers, their ABN, they can map that to their BSB and account number. So that if I wanted Javanka to uh, send me some money to uh, square up the bill that we'd, uh, we'd had at uh, breakfast this morning, I could have said, hey, Javanka, here's my mobile number. Can you, can you send me some, some money for, for that, uh, that breakfast tab? I think if we were to take a little survey at the end to say how many people know their BSB and account number, we might be a little bit over skewed towards knowing that because we're in the industry. But if you ask your members, I'm sure many of them would have to look it up. Definitely, you're not going to have that same level of, uh, oh, I don't know, let me look it up, if they were asked, asked to what their mobile number was. And then these three things, faster payments, 
much more data and the ability to easily address transactions to a more friendly and memorable uh, identifier all come together in some uh, commercial propositions that the industry is calling overlay services. Think about overlay services as uh, solutions similar to say how BPay has been able to bring together uh, rich capability to pay bills. There'll be commercially driven and promoted solutions under this overlay banner that will leverage the MPP capability to help you bring a lot more capability to your members and link services into their transaction account, which as we saw, is one of the key drivers of driving them towards being uh, taking a, mo a main financial institution relationship with you. And when you look at the, uh, the difference between NPP and the other payment streams that you're currently supporting with your members, you can see why there'll be a great opportunity to start to build commercial solutions that drive value both for you and your members across the different uh, parts of the, uh, the payment ecosystem. We've talked about uh, using it 24 by 7. We've talked about uh, rich data and the addressing service. I've alluded to the value of real-time settlement. Uh, but one of the key values there is that every transaction is actually settled in real time between Cuscal and the rest of the uh, participants in the MPP. That means that gives you surety that you can provide settlement then to your member that they can use those funds immediately. MPP is also irrevocable and includes all of that reconciliation data that we will help you to provide great levels of automation in your back office to address some of the uh, challenges that you might face at the moment with reconciliation and uh, reporting data that comes through at the moment. There is work that uh, we will have to do together to bring those solutions to your members though. So for example, in your uh, mobile banking channels, it's you'll need to support not just BSB and account numbers in that uh, internet banking and mobile banking address book, but to let your members take full advantage of being able to pay to somebody else's mobile number or pay to someone else's email address, there'll need to be changes that will be made to those channels so that you're supporting multiple ways of making payments. And then enhancements that you'll be able to make to take advantage of some of the uh, real-time nature of NPP is confirmation of payments in real time. Those of you that are in uh, operational or uh, customer-facing roles might know of the challenges that happen with mistaken payments. That if someone makes a pay any one transaction and they put the wrong account number in or they select the wrong payee out of their address book, really hard to get those funds back. Because the NPP is a real-time solution rather than a batch solution though, every transaction is confirmed in real time. So if I've paid to Jabanka's mobile number, I'll be able to get a confirmation back to say, okay, this is the number you said you want to pay to. Uh, this is registered to Jabanka. Uh, is it Jabanka that you wanted to pay? I can confirm that and have a really strong level of comfort that the person I'm intending to pay is the person who's going to receive my money. And then once Javanka receives that transaction, I can be much more descriptive in the way I've described it. So she can remember when she goes back to do her tax or do her bank account or tra uh, transaction reconciliation, that yes, that was that money that was received from Nathan. But the one that really excites me, and I think this is where we're really going to see a game change, is that you know, I've talked about that example of uh, me sending money to Javanka or asking Javanka to send money to me to square up the, uh, the breakfast bill that we had prior to coming off to this webinar. But you'll have the opportunity to integrate what's called a payment request into your internet or mobile banking applications. And what that will do is mean that I can send a request to Javanka to send money back to me. So it means that not only do I actually have a much greater real-time control of the payments that come between us, your mobile banking app starts to become a way that I do my everyday, everyday business. So it means, again, drives that engagement in the way that you're able to offer solutions to your members to do their everyday banking and do their everyday uh, payment use. So for example, we'll split a bill in the restaurant 
um, I'll be able to uh, go into my, for example, uh, uh, my internet banking app. I'll look to uh, send off a request to your banker to say, please send me back the, uh, the $10 for your share of breakfast. The request will come through in real time to her app and it won't matter whether she's with ComBank or whether she's with uh, WAW Credit Union or whether she's with uh, Bendigo Bank. Any participant in MPP will be part of this community. So it means it starts to take away that uh, advantage that large institutions have where those types of transactions really only work, for example, between two ComBank or two NAB customers. With a couple of clicks, Javanka will be able to authorise that payment and it will come straight back to me and uh, show in my account. So think about where that might uh, go in the future. If you're an institution that's uh, targeting small businesses, tradies might be able to use this to replace the need to accept cash on site or to accept a cheque or even to take a merchant terminal to accept a card because they'll be able to easily have confirmation that money has been transferred from their customer's account straight into their account. Means that smaller institutions might actually have the opportunity to provide transactional banking solutions to small businesses that at the moment you perhaps don't have that type of opportunity because your transactional capabilities are uh, not able to support that type of service. So we've covered person-to-person -person payments, we've covered the uh, request to pay. We also think that uh, government payments, and based on the, uh, the assessment we've done of transactions that have come into our clients over the last few months, at least 10% of the inward payments received by our clients come from government sources, whether they be family allowances, whether they be pensions, uh, or whether they be uh, other, other government benefits. At the moment, the government runs uh, a separate payment system to standard direct entry, but it gets inserted into the direct entry process. We believe that the RBA, as one of the uh, key drivers of MPP, will uh, work with government to migrate transactions from the, the GDES, which is, has some fairly manual and clunky processes, to the much more automated and streamlined MPP, because it will enable beneficiaries of, of government uh, payments to receive those in real time. So again, it'll be really important for you as uh, institutions that support customers that have government benefits to be able to be part of MPP so you can also deliver those real time payment capabilities to the receipt of payments, not just supporting the making of payments. And one of the solutions that is also being looked at as part of the, uh, the first wave of solutions that will be taken up is making payments with a reference attachment. So if you think about BPAYVIEW, that's uh, an invoice oriented um, attachment. What the NPP will take in the first 12 months we're looking at um, with, an, with the rest of the industry is having payments that then have the receipt attached to them as well. And again, I believe this is going to be of a really strong uh, driver with government payments where they're moving towards digital uh, uh, notifications, which means at the moment you've got separate payment and separate notification. NPP will allow that notification to join the payment. We've covered a lot of the, uh, the opportunities. I guess now we get down to the uh, the work of making it happen. Cuscal is playing a very strong role in helping to design and deliver the MPP. One of the reasons we think this is so important is to make sure that the solution is built not just to have great experiences for major banks, but also in, to ensure that this op provides an opportunity to level the playing field and provide a great uh, solution across many, many uh, sizes and uh, types of financial institutions. We think uh, working with uh, our clients and, and ASL and INJU we're very proud of the, uh, the way that the industry is looking at this to be a total market opportunity, not just a solution for the major banks. The services that Cusco will then develop 
will ensure that we work with the likes of Data Action and Ultra Data and the other core banking systems and channel systems that you use to have that integrated into the services and into the apps that you and your customers and your members use every day. So Cuscal's role, we're connecting to the NPP and we're then making that available to other institutions to either integrate through us or we take that down to our clients now. We've got people across all of the working groups, so we believe we're in a really strong position to answer your questions about how the industry is progressing and also ensure that we're inserting the, uh, the feedback and the challenges that smaller institutions and mutuals have that potentially the larger institutions don't have. And we're really pleased that a lot of that feedback and a lot of that uh, focus is being taken notice of. Uh, we've got uh, people working on this. Uh, I, I spend part of my day every day looking at NPP. We have uh, Natalie who is uh, dedicated to innovation within, within NPP and rolling that out. And we have a project team that is working with Ultradata, working with uh, Data Action, working with uh, Vermilion and our own uh, channel apps and solutions to ensure that they can fully take advantage of all the capability that will roll through uh, into those environments once we go live with NPP towards the end of 2017. What we're also doing though is working on solutions that will mean that prior to going live with NPP, we can provide you with capability to start piloting and testing these concepts with your customers and working within the the Cuscal community to provide on us and community-based payments. That's going to be really important if you think about how personal a mobile phone number is. And everyone, most people, very, very few people would have two mobile phone numbers. So if they're mapping their mobile phone number to a BSB and account number, it's more likely going to be that that one is going to be their main financial institution and their main transaction account. We believe the rollout of the, the Cuscal community payments prior to going live for NPP is going to be really important to help you win that battle to be the transaction account that uses the mobile phone number being the most personal and the most recognisable alias rather than just an email address to be that one that is the one that they use for everyday transactions. We've covered a lot of ground and I've seen a few questions come through that um, we'd like to go into a bit more detail. So we've left plenty of time for discussion and uh, plenty of time for the questions. I know that um, Javanka got some questions prior to coming into this uh, this forum from some of you, uh, but why don't we go to the, uh, the questions that first come through the, the chat, Matt, and then uh, we can go to the ones that came through earlier. Hi, everyone. Um, so the first question that came through was from Martin, who wanted to know, will presenter checks be cleared faster after 2017? At the moment, Martin, checks are still being kept as a separate payment stream. There is definitely work happening to ensure that the check process is more efficient, but that is independent to, uh, to MPP. Um, there's a process called uh, remote capture for checks. So uh, that's something that Javanka will probably uh, update you on towards the end of this year. Um, because we'll be working with uh, MagTech, who many of you already have relationships with for uh, check reading uh, devices within your branches, and NAB, who do the check clearing on our behalf, to provide you with processes that make that more efficient. What I think, though, is that we'll see a, a faster decline in checks post-2017, because if you think about the solutions that checks often are used to pay for, MPP will mean that you've probably got a much better solution to pay for something rather than a check. So um, that's probably a reason that we won't see checks merging with MPP, but MPP being one of those uh, levers that we pull to reduce the reliance on check. We also had a couple of questions um, from Scott and Rhonda around um, security in relation to the MPP. Yep. So Scott's question was um, the with the introduction of payment requests, 
does that increase your risk around social engineering? I think it's a really good point, Scott, and I actually do think that's probably one of the, when you think about fraud, potentially that does be the area that we need to focus on the most in terms of fraudulent transactions. So how that's going to work, payment requests can only come from someone's account that has actually registered a, a, a mobile number or an email address that can be uh, validated. Uh, as belonging to that person. So there will be good controls around who is able to send payment requests so that uh, if there are uh, concerns raised, they can very easily be, be shut down. Um, where the industry will focus though is on the, uh, the education and, and the training um, of ensuring that everyone understands what a payment request is and we'll link that into an industry branding for the uh, addressing service so that uh, if then getting a payment request that is not coming from uh, one of these authenticated uh, solutions that you'd be uh, comfortable to reject that. There will also be a lot of back-end uh, processes. At the moment there's not a lot of uh, live real-time sharing of uh, fraud and risk data. The NPP will, deli will deliver some back office um, automation for sending alerts between institutions for uh, mistaken payments, potentially uh, fraudulent transactions, or aliases that have been used in potentially suspicious activity. So that the institution that owns that alias can immediately investigate whether someone has been sending um, a, a lot of unsolicited payment requests. That's also where we'll link the uh, enhancements to our vigil solution to ensure that those of you that use vigil can also have a managed service to help provide alerts and a proactive monitoring of transactions that come through NPP. We have a question from Narelle who's wondering if there's going to be daily limits. Uh, Narelle, that would be linked back to your app and I can see your question about will the app have daily limits. So at the moment where you would put a daily limit for example on one or ATM or BPAY, we would highly recommend, in fact we'd probably say it should be mandatory that you should also have daily limits in your channels for, uh, for MPP. We will also put that on the, on the core but in reality in terms of managing your customer's expectation and the feedback to them if they have hit their limit, um, the primary uh, would be your app. If Obviously if Cuscal is the provider of your app, um, we'll make sure that has that data limit in there as well. We've got another question from Rhonda who's asking, how will the 280 character references show up on a statement? Will it all go on the statement or will it show up on the first line? The industry is trying to be uh, quite standardised with that so that it doesn't matter where you have your uh, transaction account you get some similarities. So at a minimum the, uh, the rules will be that the same level of information that would be provided on a statement now for direct entry would be provided for an MPP transaction. So it will be the, the first 22 characters of the sender and the first uh, 18 characters of the uh, identification data. The rest of it is expected to be carried on uh, your online banking channels. So the 280 characters might be in the transaction details. So really important that when you click on a transaction at the moment, it might just give a little bit of uh, like an, an ID number now for the for the reference of when they made it. Or if it's a BPAY payment, it might say who it's made to and the customer reference number. This is where we would suggest and where we're working with your channel providers like Ultradata and Data Action to ensure that uh, internet banking and online banking have the 280 characters available, have the, uh, the link through to the, um, the receipt in the future when that comes in uh, so that you don't have massive uh, blowouts in, uh, in the amount of data that goes on statements because we know that's going to have the biggest impact on you in terms of uh, production cost. There's definitely no expectation that you would produce all of that on a printed statement. So thank you to Matt and Scott and Arel and Rhonda for your questions. They were great questions. I'm going to hand over to Javanka now who is going to um, post questions that came through earlier from many of you in the audience. 
Thanks, Nat. Um, so before we start with the questions, I just want to draw your attention to the survey that you'll see up on your screen, and we appreciate if you fill that in and send your feedback to us so we can tailor these sessions to, um, to suit you better. So one of the questions, I guess, Nathan, um, you know, going through all that's involved and getting prepared for NPP, what do our customers need to know in, um, in terms of getting started now so that they're ready in 18 months' time? One of the biggest pieces of work is going to be the updates to the core banking systems and your banking channels. So that's a piece of work that we've initiated uh, already. So as I said, we've had uh, meetings and workshops with Ultradata, with Data Action, and uh, and looking at the, and other uh, solution providers. But I think from the group that we've got today, Ultradata and Data Action are definitely the main ones. They will then come come to you as, as their clients over the next three to six months to present the, uh, the solutions that they'll be building to integrate the uh, Cuscale MPP capability. My recommendation would be to start uh, assessing um, the commercials and the, uh, what the requirements are to do those updates as soon as possible. Uh, ensure that you've got uh, budget for those in next year's uh, plans because it's going to be implementation time. We'll have really need to start probably uh, in the next financial year, so July, July next year. You've probably got about 12 months before you need to spend, start spending money on systems. What you would need to start thinking about though is what are the experiences and the, uh, the services that you want to use for MPP. And that's where working with Cuscal over the next 12 months will actually start to, uh, to play out this will be the first of a, of a number of um, briefing sessions and what we also will be looking to do is work with each of, of our clients to uh, implement some change management and uh, solution design uh, processes leading up to uh, MPP. We'll do a, uh, an official launch of the MPP product which I guess in the first year will be more solutions rather than transact or services rather than transaction based by the end of this year. Then, then you'll probably start to think in uh, again planning for your uh, next financial year budget about how you market, how you take that out to your members, how you work with uh, leveraging the industry uh, marketing that will come in the lead up to the launch in 2017. So I think they're probably the three key areas but then there's some more micro level of details like updating terms and conditions and all mm -hmm. of those types of uh, activities that come with new product launches. But what we'll do as part of our MPP services offering is provide you with templates and guides that you can use to make sure you don't miss any of those points. And that's um, work that should start by the end of this year. Great. So then I guess um, it's clear that there's a lot to be done and a lot in terms of preparation. What do you see as some of the needed benefits for, uh, for our members that do take up MPP? A lot of it comes down to activating that really personal and uh, highly engaged nature that a, a really good transaction experience does bring to someone that uh, uses their transaction account with their main financial institution. So, Identifying how your members use your transaction accounts and what is the opportunity to make that much more their daily transaction service if it's not already, or retain them as their daily transaction service and not be uh, tempted away by the, um, the opportunity that MPP may deliver for better and richer experiences with mobile apps, with internet banking in the future. So it's really going to turn your mobile banking and your internet banking into a day-to-day -day personal payment service, not just a bill payment or um, account inquiry service. So that's that's where the main opportunity, I think, is. Mm -hmm. Great. So um, then I guess another question that was asked is, is there a drop dead letter date to launch um, as part of MVP, or can our members sort of connect by a certain date or, or as they see necessary? Sure. So the the industry solution is targeted to go live around September 2017. 
that there'll be a lot of uh, industry level marketing, there'll be a lot of activity that will ensure that uh, Australians understand that this is an industry solution. So while there's no um, mandate that any financial institution must sign up to MPP, I think if you're not part of that first wave, mm. When, it, when you're actually getting a lot of free publicity and a lot of uh, media attention, you actually lose a really strong opportunity to, to leverage everything that's being uh, read about, everything that's being talked about in, in the market. So that's one of the reasons that we're looking to go live early on. So we're looking to launch our community-based payments, the payments between Cuscal, um institutions. So whether that be a CUA or a WAW or a Heritage Isle customer, uh, much earlier, so that we can actually ensure that our clients that have those closer relationships mm -hmm. now with, with their customers and with their members are able to uh, get ahead of the curve. So we encourage you not to be waiting until the last minute, but actually get on board early. Of course, you then can come on later, but you'll you'll need to be battling to potentially win the hearts and minds of people that have already been attracted by the the the, uh, the broad media coverage that's going to come at the end of 2017. Sure, and I guess this ties back to um, using people's mobile phones in, in terms of addressing services and. So that's, that's, I guess, where the real importance is. Right? Yeah, it's true. Because, yes, what, what, one of the things that I think Australia has done really well, UK has uh, launched mobile phone number um, alias services in the last 12 months, but it's only a mobile phone number. Mm. So that really cements the main FI as, as the dominant provider of services. At least in Australia, we will actually support email addresses as well. So you could very easily still get MPP payments into your secondary FI. But you know, I think this is an opportunity to have that battle to win the hearts and minds of members to say you can now have the same quality of transaction banking experience with us as you would with the likes of ComBank or uh, Bank SA or uh, or another other uh, main main banking institution. I, I have seen a question come up while we're talking about mobile phones about what happens if you lose your phone and uh, someone has access to your phone. So. That's probably thinking that it is very much an, an alias, and mm. we're, we're using that very technical term now. We will definitely come up with a much more customer-friendly uh, brand that we can call it. But it's, you're not actually making a payment with your mobile phone. It's linking that number as an alias to the BSB and account number. So if you lose your mobile, if you lose your mobile, it's actually uh, not related to people accessing your bank account. So think about it in terms of, I'll give you my mobile number because you can send money to that as an alias for my uh, BSB and account number. Um, what it does say is if you don't have really robust identification processes, if someone wants to modify their uh, account details in their uh, online banking, that's where you will have a challenge because what we saw in other markets is that it's actually account takeover as opposed to individually fraudulent transactions that you need to protect against. Mm -hmm. So that so upfront risk management and upfront identity management is where you put the most of the effort because then you then don't have to worry about as much what happens downstream. If someone then gets hold of someone's uh, account, updates their details, takes that over, and then can send money quickly out of the account. Mm. So I think we've had some other questions come through as well. We have um, a question from Scott um, who says, what do you see as the challenges around settlement under NPP? Mm -hmm. A moving target is harder to reconcile. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, give you a frequent batch settlement rather than have to have you manage that um, moving target of settlement. So we'll, our goal at the moment and 
we haven't uh, yet locked down the exact timing, but uh, we're talking about uh, this with some of the core banking systems now that will give individual transactions um, just the same way you get a batch file of direct entry now that'll become an individual direct en uh, sorry an individual MPP transaction that the account posting can happen in real time and then we think that every hour will give you a settlement so you'll be able to uh, work out what you want to have as your settlement day so you might decide that your settlement day is uh, 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. You might decide that your settlement day is midnight to midnight, but you'll be able to work out what you're going to do your reconciliation based on. I've also seen a question about uh, the uh, the RECs for direct entry and NPP, and we know that sometimes RECs for direct entry can be um, a bit of a challenge because the value settled may not be the same as the, uh, the value process because they're all quite uh, disparate solutions. Mm -hmm. The good thing about NPP, because the settlement is tied to every transaction, will be able to monitor and control that process and ensure that while yes you will have a separate reconciliation process, you can have the NPP one completely automated, unlike the direct entry one which is often a, a tick process. Every NPP transaction will identify which settlement batch that's uh, going to be available in. So I guess when we talk about real time as well, um, there's always been the question about fraud and you know lots of concerns about fraud. There's one more question from Narelle here about will there be a 24-7 fraud monitoring system? Yep. Has this been talked about already as part of the NPP design? We are looking at uh, integrating um, an enhancement to Vigil to look at um, transactions as well. But, uh, these types of transactions as well as the card transactions. Um, but Narelle, one thing to, to keep in mind is that um, account-based um, fraud is often comes as a result of account takeover. So what's going to be really important for, for all of our clients to look at is how are they validating when customers or, or members contact them to update their account details, are they ensuring that that is not a fraudulent opportunity to do an account takeover? Because that's if you can make sure people don't get in the front door or the back door, that's then going to mean that you're not going to have um, as many uh, opportunities to have a, uh, a fraudulent transaction leave the account later on. What we will be definitely doing with Vigil though is monitoring those payment requests because that's something that we're going to see before you see as opposed to payments coming out where you'll see them before we see them. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll also be, as I talked about, putting a lot more focus into services, not just transaction processing under our MPP offer. So we'll pr be providing you and your channel uh, provided providers like Ultradata and, and Ultradata. Uh, so in data action, um, consultancy on best practice of how to pre prevent it to count takeover, how to monitor transactions that are being generated within those channels so that you can actually catch any uh, risky and uh, suspect transactions before they happen. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, I'd also like to point out that we do um, send out an NPP newsletter every month from Cusco. Um, Sorry, I think it's every every two months. Sorry. Um, so there will be another one um, coming out fairly shortly, um, and that will also include an NPP white paper. So it's quite interesting. If you're not part of this NPP um, list, please let me know so I can get you onto it, and you have all the information um, that you need to to really think about what you need to do as part of um, getting on board with NPP. What we're hoping with that white paper is that we've started to do some of the thinking for you and you can then use that as a way of uh, engaging with your uh, system providers and internally to uh, write your business case, write your um, uh, marketing plan and others to, to target uh, how you're going to bring NPP to life in your organisation. Cool. So if we I think that's it for the questions um, that were asked before. And um, Nat, have we had any more questions? Okay. 
So if we have no more questions, we'll probably look at wrapping up soon. Um, Nathan, did you have any final thoughts you wanted to share on MPP? I think definitely around ensuring that as many people within your organisations are engaged to understand NPP because it will actually mean that in the past perhaps you know, direct entry was seen very much as a, a back-end, uh, back-office solution, not really a product per se. NPP will be much more of a payment product. So it's really the type of people in, in your institution that understand how cards work are really the ones that you need to start thinking about having them understand how NPP is going to work um, rather than just see it as a, something that's going to happen and uh, be uh, not seen and not heard. Sure. Okay, thanks Nathan and thanks Matt. And thank you all for participating and joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this and, um, and took a lot from it. Um, now we will be looking and running these sessions as, um, as every, every couple of months. So um, please fill in the survey and send us your feedback and, um, and yeah, I'll be in touch with, uh, with each of you to, to check on how you went and if you had any, any follow-up questions. Now this webinar will be available as well for you to share with your teams and, um, and other people that couldn't attend today, so feel free to share that with them. Um, and thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone.